All right, welcome back to the broadcast. It is senior night here in Tampa, so between games we will announce the 18 seniors plus the manager who is being introduced. This is a four-year team manager named Zach Stutler. Been instrumental in the success of the program over the last four years. Hard work and dedication has helped many players. Carrying a 3.0 GPA, he will graduate from Tampa with a degree in sports management. Escorted by his parents, Barry and Luann Stutler. It's Zach Stutler. And the first player to come out is Eric Linder. He's appeared in 28 games, started 11 as a Spartan since he enrolled here in 2020. 61 strikeouts, 7 wins, 1 save as a career ERA of 2.92 in 3 seasons. In his time as a Spartan, he was named 2nd Team All-SSC, ABCA Rawlings 2nd Team All-South Region, and a D2ADA Academic Achievement Award recipient. He'll be graduating with a degree in business administration, escorted by Jerry Linder, Beth Linder, and Nana Linder. It's Eric Linder. Next up is Jack Brodsky. He's appeared in 16 games this year since coming to Tampa, a transfer from Emory University. He played in 31 games there. He has recorded a total of 28 strikeouts, four wins, one save, and averaged 10.65 strikeouts per nine innings and has a career ERA of 1.90, registered a single game career high four strikeouts against Eckerd. Graduating with a degree in finance, escorted by his mom, Julie Brodsky, and brother, Andrew, it is Jack Brodsky, who pitched yesterday. E.J. Daskow, who unfortunately hasn't played in a while after getting hit in the eye maybe a month ago now, has played in a total of 28 games since coming to UT as a transfer from Valdosta State, where he was named the Gulf South Conference Player of the Year. Selected for the ABCA Rawlings All-South Region first team, NCBWA All-South Region second team, and the All-Gulf South Conference first team. As a Spartan, he has a, had 104 at-bats, 24 runs, 35 hits, 6 home runs, and 23 RBI. Graduating with a master's degree in professional communication, accompanied by Eddie Doskow, Lisa Doskow, and Gabby Acosta, it is E.J. Doskow. And Taylor, I tell you, we can't imagine what he'd be putting up had he not gotten hit. Yeah, if he stayed healthy, he'd be in the same breath this season as Urso and some of the others. And it was a ball that hit off his bat and glanced up into his eye. Absolutely terrible luck. Okay, I'm doing one more page and giving it to you. Sounds good. Okay. <laughs> Next senior is Danny Gutcher, played in a total of 33 games since coming to Tampa, a transfer from Eckerd College, where he made 46 appearances. As a Spartan, he has a total of 107 at-bats, 34 runs, 32 hits, 10 home runs, 36 RBI. Registered three home runs against Florida Southern, where he tied the school record for the number of home runs in a single game. Graduating with a master's in business administration, accompanied by his parents, Carol and Alan Dut Gutcher, and Delaney Sheehan, it's Danny Gutcher. <coughs> Parker Schlichty began his career at UT and has played in 21 career games with the Spartans. A mainstay working with the Tampa pitching staff as a catcher. He has driven in a pair of runs this season against both Florida Tech and Eckerd. He has also been named to the SSC Commissioner's Honor Roll, graduating with a degree in political science and escorted by his parents Paul and Tony Schlichty and sister Madison. This senior will enter the master's program in communication, Parker Schlichty. Cameron Serrata has appeared in a total of 21 games since he started attending Tampa in 2021. As a pitcher, he's recorded 31, 33 strikeouts, two wins, three saves, <coughs> and has a career ERA of 2.67. This year, he's averaged 12.54 strikeouts per nine innings and registered a career-high seven strikeouts against Quincy. Graduating with a degree in marketing, escorted by his father, Steve Serrata, it is Cameron Serrata. Paul Sullivan, who just pitched the last game, has made 14 total appearances, make it 15 now. Started once since his enrollment at Tampa. He's a transfer from Iona, where he played 25 games and was a three-time MAC All-Academic honoree. As a Spartan, he has recorded 33 strikeouts, two wins, two saves, and he averages 10.87 strikeouts per nine innings. 
and has a career ERA of 2.3. He registered a single game career high six strikeouts against conference rival Rollins, graduating with a master's degree in professional communication, escorted by his mother Doreen Sullivan, uncle Jeff Rowland, and sister Olivia Sullivan. It is Paul Sullivan. Next is E.J. Cumbo. He has started in 122 games as a Spartan since coming here in 2020. Over the course of his career at UT, he has 491 total at-bats, 124 runs, 188 hits. Remember I said he had 491 at-bats, 188 hits? Oh, wow. 21 home runs, 119 RBI. A D2 CCA first-team All-American. South region, two-time NCBWA second team all South region and ABCA Rawlings second team all South region selection and was named first team all SSC twice graduating with a degree in criminal justice and working towards a master's of instructional design escorted by his mom Susan Carrasco dad Frank Cumbo and grandma Mrs. Carrasco it is EJ Cumbo with that the next senior he's appeared in a total of 137 games at UT in his time as a Spartan, he's had 312 at-bats, 76 runs, 85 hits, 9 homers, and 58 RBIs. He's made the SSC Commissioner's Honor Roll in his first year here, and he also tied the single-season record for stolen base percentage with a perfect 100. He's graduating with a degree in human performance while minoring in business administration. He's with his girlfriend, Julia Detweiler, ladies and gentlemen, Jose Cadenas. Up next... The senior has appeared in a total of 35 games, and he also started one game since attending UT. He has a 49 strikeouts, three wins, a 9.19 strikeout through nine inning average, and a career ERA of a perfect 3.0. He registered a single game career high of seven strikeouts in the NCAA South Regional game last season against Spring Hill. He's graduating with a degree in sports management and accompanied by his parents, Mike and Michelle DeMoe. Michael Demo. This next player has appeared in 44 games at UT. He's had 52 at bats, seven runs, 12 hits, and 10 RBIs. He's a two-time SSC Commissioner's Honor Roll recipient and has also received a D2 ADA Academic Achievement Award. He's graduating with a degree in accounting while minoring in chemistry, escorted by his mom Aaron and his dad Caleb Hunt. It's Adam Hunt. And now, it's a Spartan that every fan should remember, Jordan Lala. He's played a total of 99 games as a Spartan since his, he enrolled in 2021, a transfer student from the University of Miami, and where he started 127 games there. As a Spartan, he's had 383 at-bats, 122 runs, 148 hits, two home runs, and 72 RBIs. He was named to the ABCA Rawlings Second Team All-South Region, D2 CCA Second Team All-South Region, the All-SSC Defensive First Team, and the All-SSC Second Team. He's graduating with a degree in Applied Sociology, escorted by his dad, Rene Lala, his mom, Kelly Lala, and his brother, Tyler Lala. It's Jordan Lala, the man behind the Kevin Kiermeyer catch. The catch. Uh, the catch that'll go down in Spartans history. <laughs> Someone who's occasionally played left field alongside him is Jamarcus Lyons. He's had 108 games with the University of Tampa. 349 at-bats, 72 <laughs> runs, 101 hits, 16, well, today make it 17 home yes. runs and 79 RBIs. Make it 80 RBIs. <laughs> Got to update the stats. Indeed, we have to. <laughs> Although, he didn't match his career high of two in a South Regional game last year in Spring Hill. Fun fact, same inning, not just the that's same right, game. That's right, that's right. Over his career as a Spartan, he's received a second-team All-SSC selection and has a degree in communications, media, and culture. He's with his mom, Danita Robinson, and grandfather, Kenneth Lyons. It's Jamarcus Lyons. Grandpa and uncle got to be very proud of him. And fine, or up next, it is the man who's come from the bullpen, Braden Nelson. He's had 58 games and 11 starts as a Spartan, 178 strikeouts, and 58 games is wow. Very, very good. He's also recorded 17 wins, 13 saves, 9.31 strikeouts per nine innings, and a career ERA of 3.19. An NCBWA First Team All-American, a two-time NCBWA First Team All-South Region selection, and a two-time D2 CCA First Team All-American. He's also a two-time ABCA Rawlings Third Team All-American, a two-time First Team All-SSC selection, three-time D2 ADA Academic Award recipient, and a three-time SSC Commissioner's Honor Roll recipient. 
He's got a master's degree in business analytics and is escorted by his mother Tina, father Todd, his sister Kaylin. It's Braden Nelson. Up next, he's been the ace this season. Michael Paul has appeared in a total of 47 games and 41 starts. He has 207 strikeouts, 20 wins, 2 saves, an 809 strikeout through 9 inning, and a 352 career ARA. He's got a two-time first-team All-SSC selection, two-time ABCA Rawlings second-team All-South Region selection, two-time D2CCA first-team All-South Region selection, and a two-time NCBWA second-team All-South Region selection. He's got a degree in liberal studies alongside his father David Paul, mother Jill Paul, grandfather Ray Drummond, and Nell Drummond. It is Michael Paul. And up next, you may know him from the bullpen. He recently got another save. It's, Mike, or it's Dalton Ross. He's had 51 games as his enrollment at UT. Transferred from Bryan College where he had 63 games there. He's had 75 strikeouts, 6 wins, make it 9 saves, and 9.83 strikeouts through 9 innings with a 4.06 career ERA. He also had a team high 11.76 through 9 innings as a senior and he's earned first team all SSC honors. He has a degree in instructional design and technology and is with Tony and Mary Allison Ross. It is Dalton Ross. Wait for We got to talk to Dalton Ross's dad during the rain delay. Came up here seeking shelter from the storm. Very colorful person. You don't always get to see the players and the pair's parents in the booth as well, so it's fun to be able to talk to them. The other thing, too, I'm looking out there going, oh, I've seen them in every game, didn't know who they were. Mm -hmm. And now, another name the Spartans should certainly know and love. He may be only a sophomore in quotation marks, but he's a hundred. he's got 127 games since the start of his career. 448 at bats, 98 runs, 158 hits, 8 homers, and 108 RBIs. In this season, he's among the national leaders in doubles and has started each of his four seasons. An All-SSC selection, the 2022 and 2021 SSC Freshman of the Year, SSC Commissioner's Honor Roll recipient, an ABCA Rawlings First Team All South Region Selection, D2 CCA All South Region Selection, NCBWA First Team All South Region Selection, and NCWBA All American Honorable Mention. He's got a degree in sports management, and with his mother Julie Cassidy Emmonson, or and Cassidy Emmonson, and of course welcomed by his father and coach Joe Urso. <laughs> it's JD Urso. And finally. Another senior who goes down in the record books, the final one to be recognized, Drew Earhart, the captain, number two. He's played 251 games. That's a school record since the start of his career in 2017. He has the most at-bats with 1,006, plus a few extra he has in this game. He's had 214 runs, make it 200 or 338 hits right now for Earhart, looking at this recent game. 19 homers and 180 RBIs. He's a three-time All-SSC selection, the first freshman in program history to receive an ABCA Rawlings Gold Glove, the two-time ABCA Rawlings First Team All-South Region selection, a two-time D2CCA First Team All-South Region selection, two-time NCBWA First Team All-South Region selection, a two-time NCBWA All-American Honorable Mention, and a two-time COSIDA First Team Academic All-District selection, three times SSC Mr.'s Honor Roll Assistant, or recipient, three-time D288 Academic Achievement Award recipient, and of course, a member of the 2019 National Championship Team and a National Championship All-Tournament Team Selection. He graduates UT with a Master's Degree in Instructional Design and Technology, and he's finishing a Master's in Entrepreneurship. Accompanied by his parents, Shannon and Hall of Famer Rodney Earhart, it's Drew Earhart, and surely he'll be joining Rodney in the Hall of Fame very shortly. Might see a number out on the wall at some point in Elvern right field. I would not be surprised. Very well deserved if the two is retired. And that is it for this year's senior class. And please, F home, maybe give a round of applause for the seniors. I think one more big group photo, and it is a big group. It certainly <laughs> is. A lot of veteran depth will be leaving this team, but still plenty that hangs around. Well, I hope Jess has a wide-angle lens for this camera taking this photo. 
I think Jess is going to have to step a little further back, maybe uh, to get <laughs> she the angle. She may be behind us before she takes it. All I know is we got a good view for a picture from the booth up here. It would fit everyone at least. Yes. And also, by the way, graduating after two years as the broadcaster for Tampa baseball and volleyball and lacrosse and softball is Taylor Stolworthy, my sidekick. I don't know anything else about you other than your grade point and stuff. I don't know that. Yeah. Well, I mean, You've I, never I, bragged I just, about it. I graduated uh, cum laude as well. So. Okay, nice. So that's kind of a SSC honors role, but yeah. it was unfortunately not on the SSC honors role. From what I've heard, just from talking to people, first team all SSC broadcaster. Hopefully, that would be the goal. <laughs> I'm not sure if they've actually got those awards. Yeah. but You know what? When I was... Doing radio, and I uh, put out a uh, sports feature up in Wisconsin that was airing on some stations. And I was talking to a program director, and he said, uh, "He said, feel free. You just make up something about your product because if they want to check on it, they can." Exactly. So basically, I said I was the number one rated year-long daily sports cast about Wisconsin sports, and it was because. Most of them were seasonal about the Packers or the Brewers or the Bucks. you got to move the goalposts to make <laughs> yes. it fit. For instance, among UT, I'm the favorite. I could say, like, I could pull, among polled students at UT, I am the favorite sports broadcaster. Yes. And all I need to do is ask 10 students yes. if they like me the most. In a, uh, a, a poll of random poll. Yep. <laughs> Certainly random. Yes. Not not like I'm handpicking the people who like me You the might. Most. You might. You don't I know. could. You know. You can't really verify that. No. <laughs> uh. Uh. So but this I'm, went quicker than I thought. I'm glad you took over and read for me there. And I'll say it is good because we already had that hour delay. And I think within 20, maybe 30 minutes, 40 on the high side, we should get just about set with the actual game number two. So we might have a long commercial break now. So why don't we take a break and come back and get ready for game two. Spartans have won the first two. 9-2 yesterday, 6-4 today. Game three, if the Spartans win it, they will wrap up the SSC crown.
for game three of this series, game two of our Saturday doubleheader, Tampa Spartans baseball against the Lynn Fighting Knights. Jack Ike, Taylor Stolworthy, Spartans win. They are SSC champions as St. Leo knocked off Rollins earlier today to give the Spartans a one-game advantage in the loss column. We get ready for this game. Senior night is over. 18 seniors announced as we get ready for this game. Spartans will have Eric Linder on the mound, and his battery mate will be Danny Gutcher. As we get ready for this game, the starting lineups for the Lynn Fighting Knights. A familiar starting lineup will have number two, A.J. Orico, leading off, and he is a junior from Boynton Beach, Florida. Batting second is number four, playing first base, David Judge, a junior from Troy, New York. Batting third is the center fielder, number 25, Leon Paulino, a sophomore from Lawrence, Massachusetts. Batting fourth, right field, cleanup, number 27, Byron Murray. Had a home run in the first game today. Murray is a senior from Nassau in the Bahamas. Batting fifth, the third baseman, number 10, Derek Lamontagna, a senior from St. Amable, Quebec. I think I've said that three different ways for three different games for where he's I from. So. I think I probably said it a few different times as well. And yes. <laughs> I actually even added it. He's from Quebec. From time to time. Quebec, Canada. Uh, number six is the catcher. Batting sixth, I should say, is the catcher. Number eight, Yuzuki Okamura, a junior from Shiga, Japan. Batting seventh is number 11, the left fielder, Sean Dockerty, a junior from Middleton, New Jersey. Batting eighth is the shortstop, number 12, John Rodriguez, a junior from Lawrence, Massachusetts. Batting ninth is the designated hitter, number 44, Pedro Martinez. And yes, that is the son of the famous baseball pitcher, Pedro Martinez. If you missed the rain delay in game one and before that, when we were talking about it, he is in fact the son. He actually corrected us after we had incorrectly uh, reported that last time. It was really nice. We were able to chat with him for a few minutes in the dugout and excited to see him back in the lineup. And so on the mound for the Lynn Fighting Knights is number 26, and that is Eric Heater, and he is a senior from Monroe, New Jersey. Spartans take the field. As we said, if they win it and sweep it, they are conference champions. Eric Linder on the mound for Tampa will set the positions for you. We have Drew Earhart at first base. Nico Saladino at second base, Anthony Nunez at third, J.D. Urso at short, Jordan Lala is in left, Jose Cadenas in center, and E.J. Cumbo is in right. Danny Gutcher behind the plate, and Eric Linder on the mound. Spartans on the year now are 36 and 9. And in the conference are 25 and 4. Rollins, 22 and 5. As we've mentioned all weekend long, this is the final Sunshine State Conference game for Tampa. Not the final weekend of the Sunshine State Conference. Every, there's 11 teams in the conference, so every team, every week, one team gets a bye. Five team, there are five games every weekend with ten teams playing. One team does not play. They can schedule non-conference if they want, but they're not playing. Next week, the last weekend of the season, is Tampa's bye. They've played ten consecutive weekends of conference baseball. So everyone else will play their final three games next weekend. That's why Tampa has a three-game advantage in the win column right now, a four-game advantage in the win column. And with those games in hand, Tampa, as I think we mentioned, has the chance to clinch with a win. And you had asked them earlier, how does it feel to have to watch that final weekend? Well, if they win tonight, that won't have to have matter. Have fun. Have fun. Yeah. <laughs> They'll be able to laugh. And as long as they don't absolutely bottle the next series next week, they'll pretty much be guaranteed first place in the South region with Spart its win tonight. Tampa does play next week, and they're playing Newberry on the road next weekend in a non-conference game. But again, like you said, you want to finish strong because the next weekend is regional play. Breezy blowing in, so that's going to knock down any balls hit into the outfield. We saw three home runs last game. A.J. Orico will lead off. 
Do you have stats, by the way, on Mr. Eric Linder? Yes, in fact, I do. He's one of the team's better starting pitchers, entering this game with a 2.81 ERA through 25 innings. This is just his third start of the season. He's got 15 strikeouts to seven walks. So a little more pitch to contact, but can get strikeouts when he's needed to. First pitch was a strike to Oreco. Second pitch called strike two. Up quickly, 0-2. Weird to see him down this early. Rico had a great game last time, reaching base every single time he stepped to the plate. Just missing outside. Spartans had to battle back to win the game, trailing 2-1 to one at one point, but then came up with a five-run inning, sixth, take a 5-2 lead, and then held on for a 6-4 victory. Ground ball up the middle. J.D. Urso knew where to play him. Quick throw. Earhart, one down. Had a good book on Arico there as J.D. Urso just almost behind second base just came in and made the play. Yeah, just a really good play there, as you mentioned, by J.D. Urso. The arm speed just to throw the ball that hard. Great play and just really great attribute for Urso. Really underrated at short just how good he is to throw the ball to first. David Judge, strike call. Pounding the strike zone early. This game starting at 8 o'clock, not 6 o'clock as previously scheduled. We had an hour-plus rain delay during the first game after the 5th or 6th inning? It was during fifth? the 6th inning at sixth. the bottom of the 6th. And it was funny because the first pitch we resumed play, it ended the bottom <laughs> yeah. of the 6th. So all we would have needed was one more pitch to get to the break, but... The rain did get in the way. It had been drizzling for a while before then, but then really started coming out. And it was a very isolated shower, just basically encompassing the Tampa city limits. <laughs> it's about all it did. In fact, Rollins, who's still currently defeating St. Leo in their final game of the series, they weren't affected by rain. No. They were able to play straight through it. So they were definitely luckier on the weather side than us. I think had they played at St. Leo, they'd have gotten the rain we got. Yeah. But I know there was something that happened last year, too, where St. Leo had rain during the postseason weekend. There's a shot coming in, falls in for a hit, though, for Judge. But, yeah, St. Leo had a rain delay and, like, rain out, actually, on the, on one of the days when Tampa actually remained dry. So, hmm. interesting how weather can work, just affecting one area. 40 miles game. away, yeah. Exactly. Leon Paulino coming to the plate. Man on first, one out, top of the first. Linder fires. Strike call. Not only did we have the rain delay, we had 18 seniors introduced between games for senior night. Now that doesn't mean 18 seniors will not be on this team next year. Ground ball, ranging, Saladino has it. He's going to have to go to first. They get the out. Smart play to realize he was not going to get the force at second. Yeah, sometimes you want to try to make that double play, but on the play like that, just get the one out at first and trust in Linder to get out of the ending. He took a glance and realized that if at best it was iffy. Yeah, and at best you only get that out. You wouldn't be able to turn two from there, and that's a very difficult throw from that angle, and that has a very big potential to go wrong. Byron Murray to the plate, homered in the first game. He's a strong home run hitter for these guys, 13 on the year. I was mentioning it's more than any Spartan has for the home run column. Although E.J. Dosko, if he was able to remain healthy, I think could have matched that. He total. had nine, I believe, didn't he? Nine I or ten? He was either six or nine ten. above before, but he was on a good pace. Yeah. Strike call, one and one. So late night baseball, at least for us. We'll see the lights on uh, Tampa not too long from now. I think they're on. But just currently the red ones aren't going in center field. Oh, right? yeah, the, uh, the fancy lights. <laughs> yeah. The whole light system also is a bit fancy. They do sometimes go off. There's a Spartan home run. I've only seen the light show a few times this season, unfortunately. But 
Spartans don't have too many late night games, especially this late into a series. Right. It takes a rain delay to get a game that's going to really be going into the dead of night. Yes. Two two. Tap foul right below the plate. Linder in the stretch. A little glance back. Just missing. I'll say him, where he's putting his pitches really showcases that he is a ground ball pitcher. He's going low in the zone where he wants batters to get on top of it. 3-2 pitch now. A little off speed, fouled off. So we'll do the 3-2 again. And the pitch. Foul back. We'll do the 3-2 again. Murray digs in. Linder gets the sign and gets set. Off speed. Hits it out to center field. On his horse is Cadenas. Back, back. Makes the catch on the run to end the inning. Showing some pretty good speed. No runs. One hit. No errors. They left a man. We played half an inning. It's no score for the Fighting Knights. Tampa coming to bat. Discover your talents. Get ready to invent, innovate, and be a leader. This is the University of Tampa. Jordan Lala will lead off for Tampa in the bottom of the first. <coughs> Lala is number eight, a senior from Tampa, Florida. Played at the University of Miami. Went to Steinbrenner High School. Batting second is number two, Drew Earhart. And he was honored on senior night as well from Tampa, Florida. Went to Wharton High School. Batting third, J.D. Urso, honored as well, though listed as a sophomore with all the red shirts and the COVID extra years and everything. Some people will not have the classification that you might expect them to have. So J.D. is batting third in the lineup. Number four, cleanup hitter. Number 19 is E.J. Cumbo. And he is a junior from East Meadow, New York. Batting fifth, number nine. And that is Anthony Nunez, a sophomore from Hialeah, Florida. Batting sixth is number zero, Jamarcus Lyons, a junior from Tampa, Florida. Batting seventh, number 27, Danny Gutcher, a sophomore from Tampa, Florida. Batting eighth is number 10, Nick Saladino, Nico Saladino. And he is a sophomore from Valrico, Florida. And batting ninth is number 40, Jose Cadenas, and he is a senior from Tampa. Lala, first pitch. Ball. He's going for a bunt that first yeah. time, but pulled it back. Away. 
Heater on the mound. I got his stats right here if you want. Take it away. 565 ERA, 14 and a third innings pitched. Not too bad, 11 strikeout to 6 walk ratio. Lefty to lefty here. Heater from Monroe, New Jersey. We've mentioned there's a northeast kind of a uh, almost a third of the roster seems to have that northeast connection. Lala now 3-1. and one. And the pitch. Tap foul. 3-2 then. You know, Taylor, one thing I think we found out is with this new turf, first real rain, first rain this year during a game anyway, but it, it held up very well. 3-2. Tap foul. Yeah, it certainly did. The only thing was players slid a little more, but yeah. that was just about it. It still played well, and it dried quicker than grass would. That's yes. where it's really a swampy condition, and you're like, oh, man, are we actually able to play? Yeah. But now the turf was able to drain pretty well. It didn't really pool anywhere that we noticed. If it did, it disappeared quickly. Timeout called. Three two on the way. Tap foul again. While uh, waits, heater sets. And a long look, but a walk for Jordan Lala. Just finds a way to get on base time and time again. Lala entered with a 553 on base percentage for this game. And that number has gone up a little higher. That's walk number 40 on the season. Jeez. I'm going to take a look really quickly. Uh, trying to find single season records really quickly. Drew Earhart at the plate now. See if he tries a bunt. Again, they go to first. Earhart looks at one just outside. Did not show any signs of bunting there. Earhart two hits away from setting the all-time hit record for Tampa. Career hits. Strike inside corner. And again, a throw to first. Lala stole two bases in the previous game, so obviously that's the reason they're going to want to be a little cautious of him. Yep. There he goes. Hit and run, fouled off. Lala's now at a perfect 30 on the season. Obviously he didn't steal this one, so we didn't go to 31 just yet, but... So 30 stolen base in the season is pretty impressive. We were 87 degrees game time with a feels like of, I think you said, 96 at one point. We're 75 now after the rain has moved through, and it's getting dark later in the day. 1-2 pitch to Earhart. A snap throw to first. They're saying the wind is out of the east at 11. If that's true, it'll be blowing pitches, keeping pitches in the ballpark. East being the left field wall. Two and two now. Urso on deck.
Again, a throw. Major League has limits now on th throws per at-bat, I believe. Yeah, you have two disengagements, and while well, you can make a third one, if it's not an out, it's a balk, I believe. So do it at your own peril. There he goes again. They're going to try to gun him down. The slide. Got him. Good throw from Okamura. Yeah, it took a good throw from behind home plate to beat Lala. He had a good jump there. And the tag just beats him by, I don't know, maybe half a hand length? Or maybe a full half length. Not only that, he put it on the right spots. That's another thing you have to do as well. Yeah. You can't just reach down. You have to make sure you're hitting the batter. Bounces that one into Drew. And Drew will head to first. So back-to-back -back walks to start the game for Tampa, though Lala thrown out trying to get to second. J.D. Urso to the plate now. See if they pay as much attention to Drew as they did to Lala. This time, no. Check swing is a ball. I wanted to check quickly with Christopher Wirt, but Wirt said it was all good, and I think from this angle he held up by, yep. uh, by a pretty safe distance. I would agree. one zero -oh pitch. That must have just missed by a little. 2-0 -oh now. Heater in the stretch. That one misses outside, 3-0. and Heater kind of looks like, well, where did that miss? I think you got to take all the way if you're so here as well because he's yeah. he he struggling with command a little bit. Yeah, he he's had been getting the zone. Back-to-back -back walks, now 3-0. Make him throw you a strike. That was a ball. Three straight walks to start the game, though only two runners on. E.J. Combo coming to the plate. Just out of curiosity, nothing going on in the Fighting Knights bullpen. And there is a trip to the mound, though, as I said, nobody throwing. Rudy Garbalosa with a visit to the mound. Combo waiting just outside the batter's box. I think it's a little disappointing for the outfielders. They get to, they miss out on this little team talk and huddle. <laughs> That's meant to try to motivate and get the team refocused. Got to motivate yourself if you're an outfielder. Got to stay motivated, stay loose. You got a lot more <laughs> ground to cover. I will mention, there is activity at the bullpen. No, oh, there is. I would not be surprised. No, oh, they're start scrambling. See, yeah. Yeah, they get to someone just throwing in case Heater still struggles to find his own. Well, we saw Nelson struggling a little bit with command in the previous game. Tampa was in a position where they could find someone in the bullpen easier. Mm -hmm. They don't have to scramble here in the first inning to worry about. Right. So Heater with two on, one out. Combo at the plate. And a strike call. <laughs> oh, one pitch. Went swinging after that one. I don't know if he fouled it off or just bounced off the glove, but regardless, it's strike two. Heater with the sign. 0-2 to Combo. And he just went after that one. Just not the pitch I think he was going to get. So Heater will walk three. 
gets a three-pitch strikeout on Combo, and it'll bring Anthony Nunez to the plate. Yeah, I think just a very rare rough at bat there for Combo. He was getting a little aggressive after that first pitch. I think he was thinking that Heater was going to try to find the zone more, but Heater was wanting to throw those change-ups, and I think they did break low that first time as well. So, but Nunez has a chance still with two outs and two aboard. They shift in the outfield for Nunez, actually playing him to not pull the ball in center anyway. First pitch, though, in the dirt. Long look. Long look back at second. And the pitch. And a ball. I thought he called it a ball. One and one on the scoreboard. Popped up. Uh, they're giving chase. Out of play, though. So one ball, two strikes now to Nunez. Heater in the stretch. Two on, two out. Strike. See, I thought the scoreboard was wrong. Okay. Yeah. It's 2-2 two -two now. Yes. The Stats Broadcast site had it correct. And by the way, you can always follow along the games with the Stat Broadcast site and check out the live stats of the game of your favorite players. See, that's multitasking too much for me. Yeah. <laughs> I just look at the scoreboard. And yeah, I believe like I believe to, him. It's, it's hard because you got to choose one. Yeah. That's ball high, so we agree it's 3-2 now? Yep, 3-2. Right. Okay. And so does the stat site, and so does the scoreboard. <laughs> But, yeah, I definitely get it because, like, again, you'll have conflicting data. You really got to find one source and stick to it. Scoreboard's right 99.9% .9 of the time. 3-2 pitch with two outs, so runners can be moving. Heater in the stretch. There go the runner. No. I don't know if that scoreboard is right either because nobody was running on the pitch. Well, it is two <laughs> outs. Both scoreboards have it right, and, well, there was a strikeout and a... Uh, runner caught stealing. Oh, well, we know there's two outs, but I thought on 3-2 the runners might be going. Mm -hmm. They were not that much. 3-2 again. There they go. Ground ball out to second base, fielded by Arico, and they get out of the inning. Spartans got three on with three walks. One got thrown out stealing. And nothing across. We've played one inning, and it's no score. Tampa and Lynn on TampaSpartans.tv. Postseason. Top of the second we go. It will be Mon La Montaña, Okamura, Doherty. Eric Linder on the mound for Tampa. 
Solid first inning. So it was definitely a little easier inning than Heater had on the mound. Linder did concede the opening hit, but was able to keep his pitch count just to a modest 20 uh, and ultimately got out of the jam. Montagna now waits. They put a big shift on for him, too. You can see J.D. Urso almost behind second base, and if they get to two strikes, you'll probably see J.D. go to the first base side of second base. One strike, two strikes. I like to kind of call that style a shift where you send everyone to one side of the and field. there he goes. The Gallo <laughs> shift, where basically Joey Gallo, before the shift was banned in the MLB, was the biggest recipient of this type of play. And you look where uh, Anthony Nunez is. He's playing even further ground ball, foul. He's even playing more to second base than a shortstop might play at a normal position. Yeah, well, like that's... Near it, but... It's, <laughs> it's funny to see him literally being, like, in that shortstop spot. Yeah. And you see Urso playing second base, and then Saladino. He's like the rover in yeah. softball. You need to find a new, like, position name for that as well. <laughs> Although they're not going to use it anymore in the MLB. So yes. So maybe it's not as necessary. 0-2. Outside. 1-2. and two. you got to wonder if that's tempting for a batter, but they're like, you know, I, I just want to hit the ball. I don't know if I've got the skill to actually guide it over there. Foul back. I definitely think at some point I'd want to try a bunt down, like the left field line. <laughs> Even with two strikes? Oh, not with two strikes. Oh, okay. That would, uh, yeah, no, that would probably be a little step too far. Okay. <laughs> that could also be something that uh, Urso's watching out for, why he's only employing that with two strikes. Yes. The pitch. Ground ball right to Nunez, who we moved over there. Guns him out. So that worked out. Now, had they played a normal position, it would have been a ground out to Urso. 6-3 instead of 5-3. <laughs> yeah. Yuzuki Okamura to the plate now. Came as a pinch hitter in the first game today. Started yesterday behind the plate. And a strike call. Linder in the stretch, even though nobody on base. A little bit inside. One one. Down the middle, strike two. Both short and second are on the grass. Now they creep in. Fouled down into the Lynn bullpen. Stays one and two. Linder sets. Bounces one. Two and two. Just missing outside. Goes full. Three, two. Yeah, really close fastball there. Almost got the corner, but... Good eye by Okamura. It's really tough to hold up on a fastball like that in a two-strike count. 3-2 pitch. Fouls it off. Fights that one away. Looked like he talked to the umpire and said, was that a strike? Yeah. <clears throat> we'll do the 3-2 again. That looked pretty good. Okamura wanted a walk. He can walk to the dugout. 
He went just before the call was made, and, well, it was just on the edge of the zone. It looked pretty good. Yeah. Linder's done a good job with those low fastballs, and hard to tell from his from the angle up here. Could be sinkers, could be breaking a mm -hmm. little bit, but maybe like a good two-seamer, too. But Doherty to the plate now. And he hits that one high, not too deep, coming in as Cadena's. And he makes the catch to end the inning. More height than depth. Inning is over. We've played an inning and a half. It's still no score. Tampa and Lynn right here on TampaSpartans.tv. Bottom of the second we go. Leading off will be Jamarcus Lyons. I was talking to him last night after the game, and I said it, it's been fun to watch you this year because your, your batting average has just soared and soared and soared as the season goes on. He didn't offer any reason. He said thanks, but <laughs> he, he realized it was true. I think a lot of it has to do with just we had noted that he was hitting the ball right at people. He wasn't making bad plays. He was smoking the ball. Yeah, he but was right at people who just made plays. If we had StatCast or the Baseball Savant page for him, it'd be a lot of red circles. He's hitting the ball very hard and very well. The problem is just a lot of what happened at the start of the season went right to the outfielder. Jumping catch by shortstop. Yeah. And just other unlucky plays like that. Yeah. He's been incredibly consistent and also just recently, in the first game, hit a home run. Yeah. He's hit the ball hard and hit the ball well all year, but he's finally hitting him where they ain't. And the pitch. This time he hits it to short, or second base, though, Arico for the play. And it will bring Danny Gutcher to the plate. Gutcher was the only change in the lineup to now for the Spartans. Had a tough day on Friday, but so far has done pretty well for the Spartans. And going back and forth here with Garavito. Garavito catching the first game today. Gutcher was behind the plate yesterday. Probably behind the plate two of the two out of three games. Gutcher was graduating as well, right? Yes. So it's kind of weird because he is also, I think, sophomore eligibility. Yes. Similar to another sophomore senior, Chad Yerso. Yes. <laughs> I heard a few people talking down in the stands after senior day saying, I'll, I'll be glad when all this COVID extra years things finally ends and we're back to if you're a red shirt we understand it <laughs> but there's red red shirts there's covid years covid red shirt covid red shirt years medical year it allows uh jd or to win two uh freshman of the year awards and, and three, three times listed as a freshman yep <laughs> Fly ball, center field. Oh. It's going to be stay in the park. A couple people to our left got excited. Mike Letty, who does the public address at basketball games, is here, and he's a uh, knows the Gutcher family and got a little excited about that one. He was hoping that was number 11 for Gutcher, but not just a little short that time. And like I said, the wind is blowing in, and that was up in the air, so it probably got knocked down anyway. Know, 
Saladino to the plate now. Been a solid second baseman and batter for Tampa since getting into the lineup. Swing and a miss there. Heater certainly settled down since the first three batters of the first inning. He's finding the zone more, and that's important, important to really just keep him focused for the start. And, of course, Lynn's bullpen is now empty because of that. <laughs> Shot down the line to the Lynn bullpen, so they do have to scatter a little bit. So he's in the hole 0-2 with two outs. Here's the pitch. Looks good. Does not get the call. <laughs> Okamura, heater, halfway to the dugout. Saladino just stayed motionless in the box, and the umpire stayed motionless behind the plate. 1-2. Fouled off. Can't blame those guys for moving. It looked good. I agree. We don't, we don't make the calls, but it looked pretty good. Yeah, I mean, there's a reason that... Uh we're broadcasters and not umpires. We can't see perfectly from here, but, yeah. yeah, it didn't look too bad of a slider. That fouled off, stays alive. But always funny when a pitcher or player leaves early, goes the other way, thinking, oh, something has happened. Nah, it's actually this. Yep. Saladino showing absolute faith in the umpire. One-two pitch again with two outs. Long look. Now he's ready. And fouls that one off. Stays alive. Hatter, I believe, is going to be over 40 pitches at the end of this at bat. So at least the Spartans are also keeping his pitch count up early. Misses outside. Two and two. Two two with two outs. This time they ring him up, so he goes down swinging. The only bad thing about that for Lynn is about five more pitches to get out of the inning. Finally, getting the strike three call. So no runs, no hits, no errors for Tampa in the bottom of the second. We play two full, no score. Tampa and Lynn on TampaSpartans.tv. Good. Rodriguez will lead off the top of the third for Lynn. No score so far in this game. Linder and Heater matching up here on the mound. Linder so far, two innings, 35 pitches. Giving up just a hit. There have been some longer at-bats, though, from Lynn. They've also done a good job trying to keep the pitch count up early. But also for both teams... They don't have games until later next week, so they can use the bullpen if they need to. First pitch, call strike. Second pitch, a ball.
One one pitch on the way. Two and one. Linder in the stretch. Popped up. That is a major league pop up. Nunez drifting into foul territory. Makes the catch. Pedro Martinez strolling to the plate. And the pitch. Strike call. <laughs> and one and one. So far this season, Pedro's done pretty good at the plate. He's not a qualified hitter with only 37 at-bats. <laughs> But he's brought home 12 hits and a home run with four RBIs in the at-bats he has had. So 12 for 37, somewhere around 320? 324. Okay. But he also has an over 400 on base percentage. Okay. One ball, two strikes. Swing and a miss. He goes down. And we've got two outs here in the third. Brings up the number nine hitter, or the number one hitter, I should say, back to the top of the order, Rico. Swing and a miss. Arico grounded to short his first at bat. Ball outside. Spartans are very, very shallow for Arico. A good average hitter, probably. He's not known for his power. And he hits one up the middle. Off the middle of Linder. They're probably going to beat that one out. He does. Had it bounced over his mitt, Urso might have had the play. Yeah, I think Urso would have had a chance at it. It would have been especially close as well. Mariko was going to have a good chance to run it out no matter what. But You can't tell a pitcher not to try to field that, though. Yeah. So a two-out base hit. And it brings David Judge to the plate. He swings at the first one. Wants a new baseball. <laughs> Arico with a short lead. Now wide, now goes. In the dirt, the throw, and he's going to slide in safely. Close. Gutcher with a pretty good throw, taking that one out of the dirt. Yeah, close play, but it did just go a tiny bit high. Yeah. That's what I think just barely missed the tag. You know, when you have to field the ball, you know, kind of make a stop of the ball. Now, what was that call? Not sure what the umpire just called there. Fouled back. 
I'll say Polino is unfazed. The foul ball landed right next to him. <laughs> I was going to say, did he, he just not kept doing his that? warm-up swings. Yeah. <laughs> you couldn't see it, folks, but the ball hit the screen behind home plate and bounced within inches of hitting Paulino in the on-deck circle, and he acted like he didn't even see it. I'd have been diving for cover. Yeah, I'd be, like, kind of <laughs> bracing for cover as well. Or at least moved out of the way. But no, he continued with his swing, and <laughs> he didn't even notice as the ball rolled right behind him. 2-2 two, two to judge. 3-2 now. Man on second. Two outs and a 3-2 pitch coming up. And... That tells me it was not a 3-2 pitch. <laughs> yeah, I think that was 2-2 two, two instead. But, uh, okay, I, I fell for it again. I think it also fooled both the SAT broadcast and the uh, oh, everybody, scoreboard, okay. though. Everybody got fooled? Yeah. Except the home plate ump. Let's try a 3-2 now. Up the middle, that will fall. They're going to try to send him to the plate. They're sh sending him home. And Combo's going to let him score. one to nothing. Fighting Knights take the lead. Yeah, Rico was definitely scoring on that play, had enough speed to do so, and ultimately they're just going to throw it in and make sure there's no chance for Judge to get second. So Lynn strikes first in this game. That is the third hit for Lynn today. Paulino, the big center fielder. Swing and a miss. Not surprised he swung at that first pitch. Was fearless warming up. That one's hit out into left field. Fair ball bounces away from Lava. They had to wait on that one. to see if it was fair or foul. Actually, the runner on first scampered all the way to second. And that'll be a double for Paulino. So now runners at second and third with two outs. That one landed about a foot fair and then angled into foul territory, forcing Lala, who was playing way, to, uh, shifted way to towards center field, a long run just to get to that one. Murray at the plate now. Certainly one of the downsides of the shift because you can be vulnerable to foul ball or near foul balls like that where there's no fielder ready to make the play. Murray has power. Ball high. Linder with the rosin bag. And the pitch. Popped up. That is a major league pop-up. <laughs> Urso makes the call, makes the catch. Out of the inning, they do get a run. We played two and a half, and it is one to nothing. Lynn leads Tampa on TampaSpartans.tv.
They haven't even been open all day, have they? Did they close during the rain? Bottom of the third we go. Leading off for the Spartans will be Jose Cadenas, number nine hitter in the order. Pretty nice when your number nine hitter is hitting about 310. And we've got a uh, umpire having a discussion with somebody. I don't think it's in the Lynn dugout. He's looking between the dugout and the bleachers. Seems happy with what's been resolved, so we continue. Heater on the mound, Cadenas at the plate. And a strike call. Spartan still hitless after two. Trail one to nothing. Lynn with one run on four hits. And the pitch. Catches the outside corner. Cadenas quickly in the hole, 0-2. Top of the order, Jordan Lala waiting on deck. Does he waste one or throw down? Well, he may have tried to waste one, but Cadena swung at it and missed on the outside pitch. So that will end his at-bat with a strikeout. Third strikeout for Heater. Started the game with three straight walks. Spartans were not able to touch him for any runs as one of the walks tried to steal second and got thrown out. That being Jordan Lala who opened the game for Tampa with a walk. Then he walked Earhart, then he walked Urso. Has been solid since. Tried to bring that one in, just missed. Yeah, it was definitely a rough start for Heater when we were worried whether he would be able to find the zone, but eventually he did, and he's also gotten a few more swings and misses from the Spartans, too. Yes. Fouled off. One ball, two strikes. Heater fires. Lala watches that one inside and low. Two and two. And the pitch. Ground ball foul. Lala steps in. He steps way close to the plate in the batter's box. Summer in the middle. And the pitch. Missing outside. So he's at the back of the batter's box but up close to the plate. Three two pitch. Lala draws another walk. He opened the game with a walk. Opens the third with a walk. I right, take that back. There's Well actually no, he did open the game with a walk. Opened the game with a walk, yeah. Does the same, although yeah, it didn't open the third. Just the second time they around the order. Don't, again, I'm trusting the scoreboard. Yeah. It didn't have an out on there. I think the scoreboard <laughs> might be a little bit tired just like us. Because, again, if you so are like, just joining us... Didn't Cadena's bat? And, yeah, because <laughs> if you're joining us and you haven't heard us talk about already a massive, like, maybe 90-minute yeah. potentially rain, rain delay, delay in the first game, and on a day like a doubleheader, that's, um, that's, it's that's a not that good for us. <laughs> yeah. We really need, like, the stakes of regional play to keep us awake in yes. a, on a day like this. Inside the Earhart. Nobody's feeling sorry for us because we're just oh, paid no. to talk. Yeah. And the pitch to Drew. On the corner, strike call. Earhart was part of that walk chain in the first inning. 
where Lala, Earhart, and Urso all got a free pass. But unfortunately, no one scored. Ball low, two and one. Long look at first and the pitch. Up the middle. Maybe a double play. Got one. The relay. Gets away. Does he have a chance to go to second? He does. And he gets second base. So they got the force. Bad throw to first. We'll put Earhart on second. So an out. But a runner still on second. It's the first and time a Spartan runner got on base without a... Walk, a walk because it was the fielder's choice at second and then the errant throw. It was a good idea there from Rico, but I think a little too aggressive. He fielded it close to second, had a choice of t flipping to Rodriguez for the throw, but he chose to run over to the bag, get the out himself, and then the throw was wild to first. J.D. Urso, chance to tie the game here with a base hit. Fouls that one off. Oh, one on the way. Just missing outside. That's the 60th pitch for Heater. And we're in the third. Ball outside. Two and one now. Not playing J.D. Urso very deep. I think they're probably hoping for just some weaker contact like before because we know J.D. Urso has the power to bring it deep into the gap. We're even over the ball from time to time. Ground ball. Gets through. Do they send Drew? Here he comes. They're going to throw in, cut off, throw to second. We'll get J.D., but Earhart had scored, so the Spartans do tie it up. And he's thrown out. But Drew had crossed well before the play. So Spartans do tie it. We've played three full, one-to-one, -one, Tampa and Lynn. We go to the top of the fourth inning, a 1-1 game. I'll turn it over to Taylor to get some action going here, get us awake. Yeah, both teams open the scoreboards with Lynn bringing home a run and Tampa just bringing home a run on that final play of the inning. They were almost no hit through three despite the early shakeups from here, but it was that RBI by J.D. Urso just got caught on the way to second. The five, six, and seven hitters are due up for the Fighting Knights. It's just about ready to go. As mentioned before, a Tampa win would win them the Sunshine State Conference. If Tampa loses, 
it's going to be up to Rollins to try to win out, and then it would come down to a head-to-head -head tiebreaker. I'm not exactly sure. If Tampa actually has the head-to-head -head tiebreaker this year, they do win the conference. Well, Rollins right took now. two of three from them. So then that means Rollins just needs to win the three, and they yeah. win the tiebreaker. So I don't know if they anoint co-champs or do worry about tiebreakers. I think... I mean, as far as seeding for the NCAA, that wouldn't have anything to do with... I would yeah, Seeding would certainly be the more average record, too. Yeah. For out-of-conference play. Yes. I want to think Tampa is a small advantage on as well, but... Yeah, I don't know if they worry about tiebreakers when it comes to conference champs. I think maybe just co-champs. Haven't seen too many opportunities for co-champs at this point, so... No. And Linder missing wow, this one up high. On four straight. And I would not be surprised if we see someone warm up in the Spartans' bullpen after those first few pitches of the inning. Yeah. Linder's had some decent starts and outings from the bullpen, but you do wonder maybe if his arm he's, doesn't he's have... He's looking at the dugout. I don't yeah. know if he didn't like the... Okay. I, he just oh. didn't like the ball, I think. Okay. He was trying to so. feel it. <laughs> I thought he was looking at the dugout saying something happened. And that's what you don't want to see. You don't want to see him like saying, oh, I've got something up with the arm. Yeah. It's a catcher hustling down to the bullpen. Brings up Okamura, who struck out looking back in the second. One of the two Linder strikeouts. The 1-0. Just missing low, ball two. Here comes Sam Militello. He almost looked, Linder almost looked like he was laboring on the last couple pitches. I mean, just didn't, they didn't look comfortable. Yeah, that will certainly be the worry, and that'll probably be one of the things Militello asks as he checks in with Tampa Starter for the game. It's been more Babbitt look that's gone against him with the four hits allowed, including one of those that was right on the foul line. Yeah. A little blooper almost. That Lala just was playing a shift for. If he was in a normal position, he could have made an attempt on the ball. Or at the very least, been closer where if it drops, it's not as uh, big of a play. Okay, done with the discussion. There is action in the bullpen, though. They, uh, the bullpens have been moved behind a fence. It's in a gated community now. So we can see the ball going back and forth. We don't know who's throwing it. Yeah, usually those bullpen changes just remain a surprise to us until they actually happen. <laughs> Unless we see somebody running down, I didn't notice. <clears throat> this one's taken low, and it's ball three, mm. hitting the dirt. Gutcher's on top of it, so there's no chance for La Montagne to, to steal. There That's he goes. Yeah, that's an important strike to locate here with a 3-1 count. Or 3, yeah. <laughs> uh, fatigue getting to us a little more as the game goes on. Ah. And oof, just missing. Yeah. That was a close call. That's not as egregious of a miss as one that misses way up high or way in the dirt. That's just right on the edge of the zone, and he can't get it. I think for me, my issues are compounded by sitting through the entire graduation ceremony in the morning, too. <laughs> and fun to celebrate, but uh, it's also a long wait until getting called up. I was on the wrong side of the uh, auditorium because I had to wait all the way for one half here comes, and then the second half. And this show. should be the day yeah, yeah. for Linder. He just, something, something happened in the last couple of batters. He just did not look comfortable. He looked like he was irritated or agitated about something. I don't know. I'm thinking it's a physical thing. Just Laboring something on those regards, yeah. probably. Yep, yep. Because he pitched well, and then all of a sudden, something went awry. Not a terrible outing for Linder. Two strikeouts. Only one earned through three innings, but Tampa's going to leave it up to the bullpen, and we'll take a break as a new player is going to come in, likely for a longer relief stint yeah. right here. We'll be back with more Tampa Spartans TV.
And we're back in the top of the fourth. Beckett White enters the game for the Spartans. He enters the game with a 2 way DRA, 13 innings pitched, 16 strikeouts, and 8 walks. Linder had something going on, and Tampa's going to be making a change to see if they can now work their way out of this jam. Two aboard, no one out for Doherty. And I have a feeling that Lynn's going to maybe try to bunt the runners. That's something they've done as well. Kind of responding to Tampa's small ball, but with some small ball of their own. Next week, Lynn is going to travel back home for a three-game series against Eckert. They plan Friday, Saturday, with a doubleheader on Saturday to finish out their regular season. And at this stage, it'll probably be the end of their season as a whole. Spartans, meanwhile, will be set for an out-of-division, out-of-conference, out-of-region, actually, no, it is, I think, the same South region type of matchup as they will take on Newberry on the road on Thursday and a doubleheader on Friday. So a little interesting to see the Where, where is Newberry? Friday. Is it South Carolina? Yep, in Newberry, okay. South Carolina. So <laughs> the name of the town as well. <laughs> but as you mentioned, they have the advantage in the Sunshine State Conference. They have sort of their quote-unquote bye week next week. And again, all they need to do is defeat Lynn, and they will secure the Again, the umpire has a problem. Between the dugout and the bleachers. Now, that's where somebody might pull up in a car to load or unload somebody. And he's maybe the, the, the lights of the car are bothering. They're waving at somebody like, hey, quit it. Yeah. I, I'm betting that's what it is. Cause I have a feeling it is, too. I'm actually going to go check quickly, but just give me a... Tory's on the way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but... Yeah, indeed, there definitely is something as we're just about set to continue. That would make sense to me. So, first batter, Doherty, shows bunt, pulls it back. So, runners on first and second, two outs. Back at White, see if he can get out of this inning. One ball, one strike. White fouls it off. Or Doherty fouls it off. What would you deduce? Just lights, nothing too much. Yeah, but that could be distracting to the fielders. Yeah, maybe it could also have been something for Linder as well, a little bit distracting, yeah. because he's on the mound directly in the angle yep. Yep. from just off the field. Ball outside. And it's a 2-2 count now for Doherty. He's trying to bunt the start of the at-bat, but now in a two-strike hole, I think he's going to try to at least put it on the ground if he wants to advance the runners. He's going to take it. It's a full count. They've got Rodriguez on deck, but you don't really want the bases loaded in a no. spot like this. Because no. contrary to what the... Uh, is it two outs? I don't think so. The scoreboard says two outs. The scoreboard outs. says two. I and that is, that is, I think, unequivocally false. Because the first two batters of the inning, indeed, yeah, just the two walks. So Yeah, there, yeah there's no outs. Yeah. So here's the 3 2. Grounded over to second. Earhart picks it up off the throw from Saladino. So it will advance the runners. And that will actually be the first out of the inning. It was a tough play to try to turn two on. So once again, Saladino just electing for the easy out. And it works out here. That'll bring up Rodriguez, a chance to give Lynn the lead once again. They took it in the top of the third, but Tampa equalized in the bottom of the third. Tried to bunt. I wonder if he was actually looking for the squeeze play there or just maybe trying to get the Spartans into making a fielding mistake. Certainly be intrigued if we do see the squeeze here. 
Lamontagne running home. And they were trying it. Strike one as it misses. Earhart's going to run in. Nunez has got to be ready. And so does Gutcher. And so does White. And here's the 1-1. One, one. This time Rodriguez pulls back. Now with one out, an empty base would be a little easier to try a squeeze bunt or something, or would be a little easier to counter a squeeze bunt or a similar play for the Spartans. As this one's going to be driven to center field, Cadenas tracking back. Caught in right by Combo, the throw in. Not in time. So actually it looked like it was going to Danis, but actually it was a little more shallow in right field. But it's not going to be close enough play, despite a good throw from Combo. Lamontagne scores, and it's a 2-1 Fighting Knights lead. That'll bring up Pedro Martinez. Wearing number 44, one number short of his father, Pedro's famed 45 that is retired in Boston. He's going to take this first pitch for strike one. <laughs> Fouled away, it's 0-2. He was able to get a piece of it. Mrs. Lowe, ball one. Misses ball two. Good discipline there from Pedro holding on. Foul back, and so we'll stay at two and two. Swung on and missed. And while the run comes home, White is able to get out of the inning. It was two sacrifice plays, a ground out to advance the runners, a fly out to bring a run home, and White completes the inning with a strikeout. Lynn, however, does take a 2-1 lead. We'll be back with more baseball on Sunshine State Conference Digital Network. You're watching Tampa Spartans TV. Three one, Spart or two one, Spartans trailing here as we enter the bottom of the fourth. After a shaky start to the inning, a couple sacrifice plays brought a run home, and to try to hold on to this lead, 
We're going to see a new pitcher for Lynn. They're bringing in Tyler Romanius. He's got a 441 ERA, one of the top ERAs in the team. 34 innings pitched. Started four times, but has been from the bullpen a little more often. Third in strikeouts for the Fighting Knights at 41. He's also third in hits with 20, or third in walks with 21. But interesting to see another lefty coming out here. Combo, Nunez and Lyons do up for the Combo leading off. And by the way, just a quick note for other Spartan sports. Congratulations to Tampa softball team. They have their, had their first 41 season in program history. It also sets the brand new record for Spartans wins in a regular season at 40, breaking a previous record of 39. They'd had 39 back in 2011. It's Combo fouls his first pitch for ball one. Or strike one. You don't foul for a ball. Gumbo swings and misses its own, too. And just as baseball is trying to do here with a comeback, softball has won the Sunshine State Conference regular season champions. They'll certainly be hosting the regionals as well. And Combo swings and misses. Not having the greatest start to the night, he's struck out on six pitches in his first two at-bats. He's 0 for 2 now. That'll bring up Nunez, who's 0 for 1. He had runners in a dangerous spot, but grounded out to second. A bunt down the line by Nunez, but that's going to go directly to Judge. And actually, we'll call it foul, so that will actually save Nunez from the second out of the inning there. Interesting there. This pitch is taken for ball one. One and two is this one's fouled away. Misses low for ball two. Misses low, and the count will go three and two. Good eye from Nunez watching the backdoor slider just missing. Fouled away, and we'll go again. Swung on and missed. And Okamura. No, actually, was fouled away. 
Okamura made the tag, thinking it was a drop third strike. I thought that too. The umpire and Nunez knew it wasn't. And so we'll go one more time. On deck after Nunez is Lions. This time he misses. Okamura, the throw is nearly wild the first, but Judge had enough room to make the grab. Two away now. Second strikeout from Romanias coming out of the bullpen. So Jamarcus Lyons now grounded out in his first at bat in the second inning. Has a chance to keep the fourth alive. Tampa's been really kept quiet today, although they actually did get their only hit of the game with runners in scoring position, so they're able to get a runner there by walking or error means. The numbers are in their favor for now. Scout goes 2-0 to Lions. Swung on and missed. Two and one. This one's going to be grounded to third. The throw in time by La Montagna. And that'll end the inning. Spartans kept quiet. A one, two, three start for Romanias from the bullpen. And Lynn holds on to the lead. First time they've actually exited an inning in the lead of the day. And we'll be back with more Spartans baseball on Tampa Spartans TV. And we're back. Top of the fifth, just about set to get underway. Orioko, Judge Paulino, the leadoff hitters due up for Lynn. Current line score is two runs, four hits, and an error for the Fighting Knights. One run, one hit, no error for the Spartans. Lynn has stranded four runners. Tampa stranded two runners. After that strong first inning, Tampa has been kept surprisingly quiet. Only getting one or two runners here and there. And of course in the third inning, they were able to do enough to get a run, but that was it. First pitch to Horiko is going to be missed for ball one. Ball two, just down low. Three no just outside. And ball four. A leadoff walk and Rico this time waiting until the call was made to head over the first. We saw a couple Lynn players make a jump too early, thinking whether it was going to be a strike or a ball. 
That brings up Judge. And in this spot before, despite having a two for two start to the day, they've generally had Judge bunt it. And he's going to take strike one here. Important for White to find the zone to kick off this at bat. Swung on and missed. 0-2. Oh and did he go? No, it's ball one. Judge had the opening RBI back in the third inning. Swung on and missed. White with a fastball to get his second strike out of the game and get the first out of the inning. Paulino steps up and now White does have a double play opportunity on the board. That could mean Urso changes up how he runs the shift a little bit. Because obviously he's going to want to have someone still very close to second in case there is a grounder. White steps off. By the way, if you're a Tampa Bay Rowdies fan, you'll be happy to know they just secured a 2 nothing victory. Count goes 1-0 as this one misses a pie to Polino. One and one, getting the top corner of the zone. Swung on and missed. Now we'll go to a 1-2. Jack was leaning over to see maybe if the infield was going to shift. Like Urso sometimes likes to do. But here, going to just stay at the double play depth for now. Runner goes. Throw from Gutcher. And the runner is out by a mile. Good play there by Urso to make the tag and a celebratory backhanded flip over to Saladino. Good job there by Gutcher to get the throw. Count goes one and two as this one did miss for a ball. Swung on and got nice. him. And White will go one, two, three after that leadoff walk. The runner was caught stealing. And two strikeouts will end the inning. Tampa still trails by one, but due up is the 7, 8, and 9 hitters. Let's see if Gutcher, Saladino, Cadenas get the offense going. Bottom of the fifth, Romanius had a strong two-strikeout inning to start here against Tampa. 
Lynn holds on to a 2-1 lead. Bottom of the order due up for the Spartans. And Danny Gutcher is going to lead off. He flew out last time and in the previous inning made a very good throw to second. Taken for strike one. But yeah, the Spartans just kept quiet on the base path so far. Certainly with their hitting prowess, it's bound to change, but then they're going to hope that it'll be a statistical anomaly tonight. <laughs> they wouldn't mind playing spoiler to the Spartans' conference title race. I can also confirm Rollins was able to secure the 12-4 victory against St. Leo about an hour or two ago. Their doubleheader started an hour earlier and got the hour had no rain delay. from the no rain <laughs> delay. So they were pretty much wrapped up. So they may be watching. Yeah, a few TARS fans could be tuned in as Gutcher lines on the right. And Gutcher's friend up in the booth, just disappointed there, <laughs> going from yes to no. He did that, he did that last out. time up when he hit one out to center. He did. And that one was definitely a better hit than this one. Yeah. This one you could tell it was going to stay into the park. You were only hoping it would be down the line more. Yep. That would be the goal. Alas, it's an out. One away now for Saladino. Saladino is a sophomore, who I believe is actually a sophomore, <laughs> unlike a few of the Spartans players. Notably, Gutcher and uh, Urso with the, all the redshirt rules, but yeah, he's not a member of this graduating class. He'll be <laughs> one of the team leaders next season. Of course, some of the Spartans players can't hang around as well. For now, we'd like to get started after striking out looking back in the second. Finds himself in a 1 1 count. Check swing. Did he go? Yes. yes, he did. That's the call over at first base by Wirt. And I'm inclined to agree with him. It looked like he did just go around. The one two. Chopped over to first. They'll flip it over. Roman, yes, and that is the second out of the inning. Easy enough grounder that wasn't going to be able to be ran out. Spartans have not hit the ball solidly this game for one. And it's not a case of they're hitting it hard, but they're they're, they're making plays on it. They're just they haven't hit it hard. I mean, they have one hit. Yeah, just weak contact overall. Routine ground outs. So they got to snap out of it. You gotta find something. That's the big thing. See if Cadenas can be that spark plug as he's gonna uh, take a strike, to start the at bat. Foul back. It's 0 and 2 now. You don't want to give Rollins the option that if they can come up with a three-game sweep next weekend, they'll tie. Yep, because again, even if they're facing a tricky opponent, they still have a good chance to do a three-game sweep. They are one of the best teams in the nation alongside Tampa. Mm -hmm. And certainly a favorite to be one of the hosts of the South Regional. Either as the one or two seed, depending on how Sunshine State Conference play wraps up for both teams. Rollins is 34-13. and 13. Tampa, as you already mentioned, has 36 hmm. wins. This one misses very far inside. I think they said it hit him. Ooh, did it? Must have just, yeah, the yeah. umpire pointed down. So Tampa will take a base runner. 
I think Dana certainly won't mind that. Gets you to the top of the order. Got speed on the base. Might be two outs, but something to go on. Better late than never, I'll tell you that. And Romanius had quickly had six straight outs, or well, five straight outs, but won't get the sixth here. Lala's drawn two walks today. Helping increase his ridiculous on-base percentage. <laughs> Even Prime Barry Bonds would say that's a pretty impressive one. Yeah, those are softball numbers. Yeah. Rec, rec league softball numbers. Yeah, rec league softball numbers. Because <laughs> yeah. even though Tampa, some of some of Tampa numbers. players are actually pretty good in the OBP department, yeah. are nowhere near that number. I, w I was saying slow pitch rec league softball beer league. Yep. <laughs> That's where you have a opponent on the uh, opponent in the circle who just can't find the strike zone, and after four st or eight straight walks or <laughs> balls has to be replaced. Yep. There goes. Cadenas goes, and he will be safe. Yeah. Stay on the base. Well, did he stay on the base? Yes, he did. <laughs> that's the that's the question because again, you can easily slip past the base. I think the field will be pretty much dry at this yeah. point. But I I think even on a dry field, you slide farther. A little bit, with, yeah, especially with the turf. And too. Joe Urso mentioned after rain, you're really going to slide. It's like being on a toboggan. You almost have to slide earlier. It's a foreign in concept down here. <laughs> yeah. That's something more for people up north like myself. I know that. Yeah, you yeah. know that. You know about sledding. You know about uh, slippery things. Now, a base hit ties the game, I would think. Lala's up 3-1, and we could see Romanius knowing this and maybe being a little careful. Maybe testing, look to test his luck against Erhard. Locked him. That is ball four. Make it three walks to today for Jordan Lala. <laughs> that is going to be 42 in the season for him. Great stuff from the recent graduate And there will be a quick conference between Romanias and Okamura. So, Drew Earhart can be the hero here. Actually, it, not a hero if you're tying it, but... Uh, yeah. He is a clutch hitter. Can be a, the yeah, can be the big hitter. Had a fielder's choice and later scored. That was the one run the Spartans had in the game. Yeah. And now he's a chance to drive it in. Command has been an issue for both teams. Eight walks in total. In the first five and two thirds. Four and two thirds. Make him throw a strike at this point. I mean, that's always the plan. Just get him to throw into the strike zone. If J.D. Urso on deck, too, because, well, it's that part of the order. Yeah. But the big thing is, is, yeah, take until a strike. If he's not throwing a strike, you bring up the team's best, I think, power hitter in that regard. He does the most to get the ball off the bat. And this time he'll get a strike just inside with a fastball. One and one. Runner goes. Okamura had to get on top of that ball, and he did. It was very far outside. So Cadenas, stealing third, has worked out to perfection. You think Cadenas went on his own because Lala stayed at Yeah, first. that was the plan. You normally do see a double steal in that spot, but I well, guess they ultimately did let him go. Yeah. question is, will Lala go? No. Also, they may be careful with Lala because... Romanias is a lefty. And lefties looking right at first as they yeah. get set. They have more time to do the fake throw and catch a runner off guard. Stretching and tossing in the Lynn bullpen, but here's the 3-1 to Erhard. He's going to chop this one foul. I think that would have been ball four. Might have been, yep. Iffy. Full count, tying run, just 90 feet from home and ready to go.
Lala goes, and that is wow. ball four. The bases are loaded. It's up to Romanius. Nothing going on in the bullpen. But here comes Rudy making the walk out. They're going to have a quick talk. Settle them down. And it'll be up to J.D. or so. He's one for one. Well, the way it's going, take take another walk. Yeah. But also, Urso has the only Spartans hit. True. And he also did have a walk back in the first inning. So, either so, way. Would either way would help. Yep. It would tie the game for the Spartans. Base hit could give them the lead now. And also, you see a righty warming up. If they make that change, it could give Combo an opposite-handed matchup. Something I think he might like right now. He was one of the early victims against Romani has to strike out. Get an extended version of Urso's walk-up song, <laughs> Ain't No Mountain High, yeah. right now. Supremes. A classic. Actually, I think it was uh, Diana Ross and a duet. Know the song, do not know the musicians. Pretty, pretty, think, pretty sure Diana Ross of the Supremes. I'll have the intern check. Intern still here. Yep. I'll have to take your word for it. <laughs> but the I bases, the king of this, are loaded for Urso. He can actually overtake Combo in terms of RBIs in the season here. But obviously, getting a victory would be more important for him than chasing a fictional RBI crown that we keep uh, well, I keep making up. Okay, by the way, I was wrong. You were wrong? Marvin Gaye and Tammy Terrell. Ah, alright. It was a duet, I was right. Tammy Terrell so sounding right. a lot like Diana Ross. Maybe a third right, because you got the duet part right, but yes. both musicians wrong. <laughs> so one for three. <laughs> one for three, unlike any of the Spartans hitters so far. Right now, yeah. Urso up 2-0. Cadenas back safe at third. Good idea there from Okamura because Cadenas wasn't exactly back. He did a quick throw that was picked up by Lamontagne. All right, 2-0, you, you do not even swing at this. Yes. You're waiting until he throws your strike. Yes. You don't need to swing. That's, I think, the big thing Ursa needs to know. No matter what. And that's probably what his coach and dad is telling him. Both of them. And they'll be both as disappointed if he swings too early. All right. And now here's the strike. You now know he what? gets a green light. That was a tough pitch to hit anyway. Exactly. And that's why he wouldn't have swung at it. Mm -hmm. yeah, very nicely painted on the corner. That's a 50-50 one, but the tie goes to Romanias this time. Here's the 2-1. Ah. Swung and missed, and I think you could expect that he was going to go off speed there. And Urso fell for it. 2-2. Two, two. With two outs here. Huge pitch coming up. Though there is another ball. Another pitch Romanias could waste. Oh, Urso had there. to go. And unfortunately, he's going to miss up high. A strong fastball by Romanias. Gets out of the jam. While well, the bases get loaded, they will get cleared. That's now five left aboard for the Spartans. 2-1 Lynn lead entering the top of the sixth.
Lin's biggest power threat has gone 0 for 2 to start the game. Yeah. But he's going to lead off here in the top of the sixth. Lin holds on to a 2 1 lead. Just ever so close. Spartans have had multiple chances, as you mentioned. Three base runners with no hits, and they haven't been able to do anything. They got three walks in the first, didn't score. And three, three walks. walks in the sixth and didn't score. Bottom of the fifth, yeah. Bottom of the fifth. And didn't score. Surprisingly, that Lynn bullpen remains empty for now. So Lynn is daring them to score. They really are. And they'll still hold on to this 2-1 lead as the count goes 1-1 one one to Murray. Popped up. Saldino tracks back just under the UT logo in center field. And we'll get the first out. And a little gust of wind coming in here. It's but windy now. It's it's picking up. I think and it it's is. cooled off. Yeah. And I wonder. I think it is blowing back across the field, as you mentioned. It was coming that from the east. It's now down to 75. was 87 earlier today. And the wind is out of straight out of the east, so it's coming right over the left field wall at 11 miles an hour. And that was a gust of even more than that. So if you pull it down the right field line, you could get a little carry. But... That's certainly going to make it harder to drive it if you're going down the right field line like some of the hitters do. Yeah, if you're going to if you're going to pop one out of the ballpark on left field, you're going to have to probably do a line shot. And the question is what they are making a change. I think they need a new new glove or something. Yeah, a new wristband glove or, a, or Yeah, we saw Candy bringing one out. Yeah, and then Drew Earhart brought his into Gutcher. Taken for strike two. So interesting to see. And, well, bases are empty. And now we see the Spartans the, yep. shifting once again. Nunez is playing as the 56 at short. Uh, Urso now playing at a semi-second base. <laughs> they do this for La Montagna mm -hmm. and Dockerty. Really aggressive against the lefties. lefties. Yes. And that did hurt them earlier in the game, I believe. As Rico, who they had maybe a similar... No, I was just thinking wrong. As this one's going to be grounded straight into that shift. Although the player has to run the first base. Nice play by White. Nice job for him. That's a tough play, especially with a slow roller. Because you're taught to come off the mound and don't head straight for first. You find a spot about 10, 15 feet on the baseline in front of the bag. Get to that and then run up the baseline. Because if you come straight for the bag, you're going to collide with the runner because you have to go across the bag. Right. And it's all even tougher to get the, to see the throw from that angle. So you want to get aligned with the throw. But yeah, he had to go to the bag because that was the only way he was going to beat the runner on that slow, yeah. slow grounder. Ripped right nice. to Earhart, and that'll end the inning. White goes one, two, three with a pop-up and two quick ground outs. Mm -hmm. He's doing good on the mound. That's yeah. his third inning with just one walk allowed. Three strikeouts, although he allowed a run that was graded for the other pitcher because of some good sacrifice hitting from yes. Lynn. But still, White doing a solid job as we're going to enter the bottom of the sixth now. And we're back, bottom of the sixth. 
And last season, after the spring semester ended, my family and I went down to Miami for the inaugural Miami Grand Prix for Formula One. Okay. That was a fun trip, sadly, with graduation. Can't make it again this year. So it's this weekend? It is this weekend, okay. and Sergio Perez just recently got pole. And Haas, the American team, had a driver qualify fourth. So that'll be exciting for that race. That'll be on ESPN tomorrow. But for now, you're watching Tampa Spartans TV, and we're about ready and to you go. Had, you had your own graduation this morning, and you are going to your brother's graduation tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> so two back-to-back. He had to sit through my graduation. I'm going to have to sit through his. Okay, so you got to return the favor. Yeah, and obviously it's not. We're excited to see each other graduate. <laughs> uh, and leading off is going to be EJ Combo facing off against Romanias. He gets a green light to continue after a somewhat shaky fifth inning. He got out of the jam. And obviously, they're going to like that lefty-lefty matchup that has really been the combo kryptonite today. Yeah. I and mean, throughout the season, combo hasn't been too phased. Here's the first pitch. Combo so finally takes. Spartans need to make Lynn pay for the opportunities they keep giving Tampa. Yep. And so far, they've dodged the bullet twice. At least twice. Fool me once, shame on you. <laughs> and for Tampa, they were kind of fooled twice that time. Yes. They don't want to make it three. Gumbo sends this to the left field. It may fall. It could fall, just like the blue oh, from foul. earlier. Foul ball, though. So it does fall, and Lamatanya can't make the play. It's also about five feet foul, so yep. the count goes one and one. Good effort, though, by all the Linden fielders and outfielders to make that play. Saw so three people chasing it. I noticed a couple times Akamura has gone and picked a bat up and given it to the uh, the batter. That's nice. And it reminds me of DeCarlo DeVoe, who we've both done basketball games with. Yep. And he said, you know, if, if a, you knock a guy down, you don't help him up. <laughs> <laughs> he said, he is the opposition. You don't do anything. Uh, that's this one's popped up and should be in play now for La Matan. And oh, drops, drops it. it. Yeah. That was going to be an out, yeah. but just slips out of his glove. I don't know if he took his eye off it or, again, we said there's an 11-mile-an-hour wind blowing in, and it may have just moved a little bit too far toward home plate. That may New have, life, that may have pay. been, although I will say it looked more on the glove than that because yeah, it did pop in out. and then pop out. But certainly the wind makes it a little trickier to track. Yeah. It doesn't set you up perfectly. He almost looked like he looked away just before he caught it, like just making sure of where he was, and that may have hit the wrong part of the mitt and spun out. Combo swings and misses ah, after those two foul You need to make him balls. pay. Yeah. Another mistake. Just yeah, he's not looked good against lefties. He looked good to start the at-back, getting some contact, but then just, yeah, fooled by that slider. And if we take a look at Combo's plate appearance on the stat broadcast, it said Combo dropped foul ball instead of the notation of <laughs> what actually nope. happened. And Nunez, by the way, gets hit in Just the hitting, foot. hitting the foot or the ankle. He's going yeah. to take a free base. But, yeah, funny to see how that uh, was <laughs> notated on SAB broadcast. <laughs> like you mentioned before, uh, search up Tampa Live Stats or search up Lynn Live Stats if you're a fan of the Fighting Knights. And you can check out your team's stats live as the game is going on. It's especially useful if, say, Tampa's on the road and broadcast maybe isn't going. Because I know mm -hmm. sometimes other teams might have it not broadcast or things like that. It's also useful, say, if you're excited about beach volleyball because... There's no broadcast. I helped out as PA one time for them, but huh. what you really have to do for that is check in with the live stats or come to the University of Tampa and see it in action. Yeah, Beach Volleyball won the small college's uh, championship again. They had won the title before. Here's one, and Rodriguez was ready for the throw, but he was about to double clutch it and thought, yep. you know what, I might as well not risk an error. Yeah. And that's actually a smart play because, again, you're in the lead, you're in control, you miss a throw, and Lions, who just grounded there, would get to second or even further. Again, Tampa just not getting that big hit right now in this game. Getcher's the player who can do it. He's, He's hit a couple to the outfield, but nothing to show Spartans, for it. But yeah, as you've said, there have been a couple groans from the booth. Can he convert? 
Swung and missed. That's a really good slider that Romanius has had. It's fooled lefties and righties alike. And it's hard for a slider to fool right-handed hitters. Mm -hmm. It's easier to tell when something's breaking, when it's literally breaking into you. Misses outside. It's one and one. You know, with two outs, love to see one in the gap. Lines will be running into anything. It'd be great if he could be put in play and see if he could try to make it around. There he goes. Well, here he goes. The throw. And he got Dang. him. So just another good throw there by Okamura. Tampa, the small ball not paying out too well. Mm -mm. And look, the aggression of the base paths has also not worked. Quickly looking at lines. The good news is I think he's more just tying his shoe yeah. down the slide. He had an injury in the base path earlier in the season, but good news is he looks all good. Bad news for Spartans fans. Good news for Fighting Knights fans. Lynn leads 2-1. Top of the seventh coming up. Top of the seventh we go. Lynn on top of Tampa, 2-1. to one. Jack Ike along with Taylor Stolworthy. As the Spartans will need to rally to pick up the win here. They've been held in check, one run on just one hit. So they've had a lot of runners in scoring position. They had a lot of runners on base as Lynn has walked a bunch. First three batters of the game walked. Tampa did not score. Three batters walked in the fifth, did not score. Leading off is Dockerty, tall lefty. Beckett White on the mound for Tampa has pitched three solid innings for the Spartans at this point. Ball a little low, hat came off. The mission is clear, though. A Spartan win, they clinch the Sunshine State Conference Championship. Ground ball foul into the Lynn dugout. There's the shift with two strikes on Dockerty. They move three players to the first base side of second and move Anthony Nunez to shortstop. And that one way, way outside. Nobody on base, so no harm, no foul. White, 2-2 two -two pitch. Ground ball, Earhart fields it cleanly, makes the play, steps on first, one up, one down. We'll bring John Rodriguez to the plate. Two at-bats today. And a couple pop-ups, though a sacrifice fly brought in a, the lead run of the game. Top of the seventh, Lynn up two to one. The pitch catches the inside corner, one and one.
way inside, did not break enough, or started too far inside and didn't have a chance to get into the strike zone. Two balls, one strike. Ball high, three and one. Beckett White, a sophomore from Gulfport, Mississippi. Ripped down the line, but foul. Went to Chipola College here in Florida first before coming to Tampa. Solid athletic program at Chipola. That one is hit. That may be in the gap. Giving chase. Coming over is Lala. And he makes the catch easily. I think the wind held that one up enough that it didn't get into the gap. And Lala tracked it down for the out. As we said, an 11 mile an hour wind coming over the left field wall. Gusting at times. Pedro Martinez now to the plate. Beckett winds and fires. And Martinez goes upstairs but swings and misses. Ground ball. Urso had him played well. Quick toss to Earhart. We're done with the top of the seventh. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left. We have played six and a half, Lynn two, Tampa one. So we head to the bottom of the seventh. Tampa needs a run to tie. Two to take the lead. Tyler Romanius, though, has held them in check for three solid innings. Walked a couple. Struck out four. 50 on the pitch count for three innings. For Tampa, he will face the 7-8-9 hitters. Gutcher, Saladino, Cadenas. Tampa's been held to one hit in this game. That one hit brought in the one run. Gutcher coming to the plate is flown to center and flown to right today. Romanius, nobody on, pitching out of the stretch anyway. Ball outside. Ball just missing there. Tampa in this game just one for 16. 
They've had six walks, seven strikeouts. One for six with a runner on, one for four runner in scoring position. And a 3-0 count. Got to be taking on this one. Make him find the strike zone. He did, and it's 3-1. Romanius fires. Ball four, another walk for Tampa, leadoff walk. And I'll bring Saladino to the plate. The dreaded leadoff walk. Which is no worse than any other way to get on base to lead off an inning. They, If you get on base to lead off an inning, you tend to score about 33% of the time. One in three. But coaches think the leadoff walk is terrible. Tries to show bunt, pulls it back. Get that runner in scoring position. Ball one. Does Saladino try to put it down again? Yes. Pulls it back. Ball two. So that's six straight balls from Romanius. So with a 2-0 count, you show bunt. But I don't know if you put it down. Make him throw a strike. This time he does. Two balls, one strike. Still might try to get the bunt down here. 2-1. He does. Gets it down. Foul. So now it's going to be 2-2. Two, two. Swinging away now is Saladino. So a leadoff walk, now a 2-2 count. Saladino tried to move him over on the sacrifice bunt, fouled it off. 2-2 coming up. Swing and a miss, goes down swinging. <laughs> Pinch hitter, I think, coming up. McAllister Jorgensen coming in, batting for Cadenas. <coughs> Jorgensen is sophomore from Brandon, Riverview High School. Good idea here. It's always interesting. Got to try something new in a spot like this. Cadenas is a solid hitter, but it seems clearly just stuck. Yeah. They only have one hit in the ball game, and even though they are getting runners, they're just not able to convert. Right. They're going to hope that Jorgensen can do so here. I mean, these stats are abysmal if you take a look at the average. Mm. One for 17. Yeah. Seven walks they've been given. But also eight strikeouts. Eight Ks, yep. Jorgensen watches one inside. Again, Romanius is not hitting the zone. Got the strikeout, though. Swing and a miss. Jorgensen, pinch hitter occasionally. I think when it comes down to it, Spartans just need to know when he's going to throw the strikes <laughs> and know how to hit it well. 1-1. One, one. Runner goes. Jorgensen sees it outside, sliding. He's in safely. Nice jump there. And Gutcher, I don't know if he's really a base stealing threat, but got a great jump. The pitch was outside. Forcing Akamura to go get it before he can make the throw. I wouldn't call him a throw on the same level as a Lala or a Kedanis, no. but he has been doing pretty good so far. Okay. He's at eight and he hasn't been caught. You just don't think of a catcher as a base stealing threat, exactly. I guess. Exactly. <laughs> the only real MLB comparison that kind of is a base stealing threat like that is, well, was Jason Kendall. Swing and a miss. Two and two now. Got 
Got to get one through the infield here. Runner in scoring position. Not this at bat. Jorgensen goes down swinging. We'll go to the top of the order with Lala. One out now. Need a clutch hit. Here's a clutch hitter. Lala still has the lefty-lefty disadvantage, yeah, but yep. so far he's known how to get on base at the very least to keep the innings alive. And well, he's at three, so three walks today. <laughs> That's not a safe bet, or it's a somewhat safe bet to make a guess that he may be able to draw another. But obviously, Lala might Outside. want to get a hit here to try to yeah. you know, score that run. Dutcher's running on anything. Not only are there seven walks, but Lynn has committed two errors as well. 1-0. Strike call. And yeah, thinking back for one of the errors, that was a dropped foul ball that Tampa That's true. did not take advantage of. The other one was a uh, throw to first base, I believe, to get Drew Earhart. It was going to be a double play, yeah. but ultimately Earhart was able to beat the throw because of that uh, errant throw. And he took second, but still did not score. Outside. Well, you can have someone warming up in the bullpen. I don't think there's a reason to take out Romanians. Tampa just clearly hasn't figured him out. No. Unless he continues to walk the bases full at some point, you got to make him pay. 2 1. 3 1. I think you take. Maybe not. What does Joe think? It's going to be interesting. And although for Joe, he may just leave it up to Lala yeah. to give him his experience. And also, if you're a Romanias, you're probably throwing a waste pitch. No reason to hang something and risk a hit. He got a free base. Here's the pitch. We'll find out. Strike call. Don't know if it was a great pitch to hit, but it was a strike. Those are always tough as well for lefties to hit. You see yeah. like a front door slider coming in like that. So it's a full count. Two outs, 3-2 three, count, man on second. Here's the pitch to Lala. Down the line, it's going to carry foul. Down the left field line, hits the screen and comes down. It's one of the first times Lala's needed to swing today. If he gets on... Drew Earhart is waiting. If he draws that other walk, it would be a reverse <laughs> golden sombrero. <laughs> Three two again with two outs. Walked him. Close. Four walks today for Jordan Lala. Now runners at first and second for Drew Earhart. Again, we need the clutch hit. Nobody throwing in the Lynn bullpen. Leaving it up to Romanius. He's on 72 pitches, but still looks pretty good with his speed and command. Strike call. And it's certainly not like he's missing the zone because he's lacking control. Mm -hmm. It's just the way he pitches. He's really just aggressive trying to get those swings and misses. And for the most part, it had worked. Six strikeouts. And the pitch. Fouled back. 0-2 now. Two strikes. Two outs. Two on. The pitch to Drew. Fouled off. Still 0-2. Well, 
Long look for the, the call. Still looking. Still looking. We're set. 0-2 pitch. Outside. J.D. Urso hoping to get up an at-bat this inning. I know he'd love to have the bases loaded or a spot <laughs> where he could turn a 2-2 deficit into a yeah. potential lead. 1-2 pitch on the way. Ball too high. And that's just that experience from Earhart, knowing that it was going to be a high fastball and taking. He's reached base just like Lala every single time. One of those came on the fielder's choice. That was the error that uh, allowed him to get second. 2-2 two -two pitch now. Way outside, 3-2. So 3-2, two, two on, two out, number two at the plate. Romanius looks in. 3-2, runners a run. There they go. And that is ripped. That's going to tie this game. Maybe give them the lead. One hop to the wall. One run is in. Here comes Lala from first, and the Spartans take a 3-2 lead on a double by Drew Earhart. Finally, a clutch hit, and the Spartans take the 3-2 lead. That is ice in Earhart's veins. A cool, calm, and collected line drive to score both runs. And I have to give credit to Romanias. Six strikeouts and three and two-thirds of no-hit ball yeah. is ended on that fateful swing. He wanted to get the strikeout, but Icarus flew a little too close to the moon this yeah. time, <laughs> as we are in the night. And that'll bring up J.D. Urso with a runner on second. Now, does that tie... That's the, yeah, that, that, that gives him the record. They, they're throwing the ball to him, I think. That is the record tying ball, I believe, yes. Let's make sure it's, is it record tying? Tom, is, is that record setting? Tie? Okay. Yeah, that's the official. Okay. So he ties the career record for... Base hits. Yep, he entered this game at 338, and that was number 339. What a way to do it. Yeah. Giving him a lead. He's on second now, and J.D. Urso, let's bring in one more. Inside, one and one. I think it's almost funny how those those memories, that like those records that we mentioned at the start of the game, sometimes get forgotten yeah. <laughs> as we enter a really high leverage moment like yes. that. Not a cheap hit. He didn't get cheated on that one. One hop to the wall. Two outs. Runners running. Scoring from first and second. JD, that one bounces. There goes Drew. Heading for third. The throw. He's in. Stay on the base. <laughs> now he's 90 feet away. Still going to take a hit from JD or a wild pitch. And now you wonder whether Romanius might have a few more of those wild pitches. Yeah, he's been... He's on 80. Yeah. He's basically had a full start at this point. <laughs> that one gets away, but only about five feet away. It's probably the reason Okamura wasn't panicking too much. He knew where it went. Sometimes the catchers will look around and realize it's... Finally figure out it's at their feet. It's 3-1 now to JD, I think. Again you take. Certainly. And also, they're probably going to walk to try to bring up Combo. And the pitch. Way outside, and J.D. Urso gets the ninth walk of the game for Tampa. And that is some good plate discipline. But of course, naturally, that's combined with nine strikeouts, so that kind of evens out for yeah. just good plate discipline, not great. But that is an inordinate amount of walks. It really is. Definitely not a record for Tampa because they definitely had a, a game where they probably had more walks than a think double digit probably walks? blowout, yeah, most likely. Weirdly enough, I don't think there was actually that many walks in the, the 
massive postseason victory last year. There was more base hits that Tampa had gotten. A mound visit by the catcher. Action, two people up in the bullpen now. Looking to see if Rudy's coming out of the dugout. Nothing yet. And they're going to break up the uh, conference. EJ Combo. See if he can punch another run across here. Drew Earhart on third. J.D. Urso on first. E.J. Combo at the plate. Tampa now leads 3-2. to two. Romanius with a long look. And he misses outside. If Romanius does not get Combo, may be his last batter. And I think the reason they still have him in right now is because Combo has been really struggling against him. Yeah, and he's lefty lefty. Check swing ball two. Now you you wait. Here comes Rudy. First visit, so doesn't have to pull the pitcher out in this one. Not sure if the pitchers have had enough time to warm up. Yeah, they were stagnant for a little while, so. Yeah. But as you mentioned, that's just the first hit off that he's given up. <laughs> Indeed, although it is the second of the ball game, the scoreboard has yeah. that number wrong. This wasn't a no-hitter all the way through <laughs> seven. That would have been almost even more heartbreaking. Yeah. Because yeah. that wouldn't have scored a run for the yeah. Spartans. But... Yeah, it was two hits, and for Romarias, only one hit allowed. Naturally, the five walks. But he's walked five, yeah. Kind of damper it a little bit, but again, he also then responds with six and strikeouts. I think he made the call to the bullpen. I think he just signaled. And that probably yep. would be it. So we are going to have a pitching change. Why don't we take a break? We'll give you the details when we come back. Tampa leads 3-2 here in the... Bottom of the seventh. Bottom of the seventh. I couldn't add that up fast enough. Right here on TampaSpartans.tv. So a pitching change coming up here as we are in the bottom of the seventh. It is Jake McKenna coming in, a junior. Tall, 6'4", 225 from Palos Verdes Estates, California. He will try to keep the Spartans' lead down to 3-2. to two. Hasn't had a bad season so far. Ten innings, a big crazy stat, 13 runs allowed, three of them earned. Wow, he's not getting field support. Yeah. And that's probably also the reason that he's currently 0 for 3 on his record with just 9 relief appearances. First batter to face will be E.J. Combo, and actually he will inherit a 2-0 count. They decided to make the change in the middle of the at-bat where I think they probably just 
had to guess that Romanias was just done. Yeah. He just wasn't able to continue. Now, oftentimes a reliever coming in, though that first couple pitches, they're trying to find the zone. We'll see what happens. Runners at the corners. 2-0 pitch to Cumbo. And he misses 3-0. Found the, it was a good spot, just broke inside. Anthony Nunez waiting on deck, 3-0. Put that bat on your shoulder and just watch the pitch. On the way, strike call down the middle. So now... I got a green light to swing. Might be, yeah. If it's, in the, if it's one you like, go ahead, but don't go chasing after anything. 3-1. Fouls it off, 3-2. So now, J.D. Urso can be on the move at first base with a 3-2 count with two outs. McKenna sets. And McKenna fires. There goes J.D. And in the zone for a call, strike three. That one he wasn't waiting for. That was a bender that came right in on him. Spartans do score two. Only got one hit, but take the lead on a double by Drew Earhart that one hop to the left field wall. 3-2 now at the end of seven on TampaSpartans.tv. Eli Thurman coming in to pitch for the Spartans in the top of the eighth. He is a righty, 6'3", 195 sophomore from Bradenton, Florida. And his job, hold on to this 3-2 lead now. Spartans have made a couple other changes. Palma has gone into left field. Jordan Lala will move from left to center. If you remember, Jose Cadenas was pinch hit for by McAllister Jorgensen, necessitating a replacement. To see Palma getting some action in the field, mm -hmm. though. He doesn't always come on as defense replacement. He's more of a kind of a late game pinch uh, runner. replacement. Yeah, pinch yeah. runner or a replacement batter when the Spartans have a pretty yeah. set result, whether it's a big win or a big defeat. You know, more often than not, it's a big win. But TJ Palma is a six foot sophomore from Pleasantville, New York. Eli Thurman on the mound for Tampa. First batter he faces is Orico. Did I ask you if you had numbers on Thurman? Not yet, but I'll let you know. 494 <laughs> is his ERA entering the game. Started 11 times. He had one appearance in the bullpen before this. And I think you had asked me a question earlier. Mm -hmm. Who is the Spartans' third starter? Yeah. Well, more often than not, it's been him. Because Linder started today, but that was only about a second or third start. Yeah, so I have a feeling that they're going to hope that Thurman's got enough gas in the tank to make it the rest of the way. Yeah. As there's a check swing. Did he go... Well, yes, he did, and after yeah. the drop third strike, Danny Gutcher gets out number one. Nice. And by the way, another quick note, that's strikeout 38 on the season to just 12 walks. Okay. David Judge now to the plate. So did the Spartans knock the wind out of the Lynn sails with the two runs coming in the seventh? This has been a pitcher's duel. I guess if you could say nine walks is a pitcher's duel. 
12 walks combined is uh, <laughs> certainly not what you expect in a pitcher's duel, especially with nine of the walks coming from one team like you mentioned. But 12 walks and then just a 3-2 game. 16 strikeouts is probably the big number we want to look at, though. Yeah. Because some pretty dominant stuff from both teams. They're walking you or striking you out. Fouled off. And with no home runs, it's really just true, uh, too true out in baseball. And note as well, Thurman coming in will finish the day for Beckett White. Four innings, three strikeouts, one walk, no hits. He will be, uh, has the decision on his side right now. And will be a very well-earned win for him mm -hmm. because he carried those middle innings. Nice pitch. Call strike three. Check with the base umpire. Two down on a couple Ks. The fearless hitter, Polino. Yeah. Referencing back to that warm-up where he did not flinch at a foul ball that <laughs> was dropping right next to him. And he's been fearless at the plate. He has a double And end. he gets a trip. No, he got out of the way. I thought that grazed his thigh. Now, that's the first time he's flinched at a ball headed his way. But you do have to flinch <laughs> when there's a fastball cutting a little too far inside like that. I've seen many a player just hold their spot on that and take it. Whew. That, one's, that may be a gapper. Diving Lala gets past him, though. Goes all the way to the wall. Heading to second base is Paulino, and he's going to stay there. Don't know how close Lala was, but I think he was pretty close to making the catch. It's actually Palma out in left. Palma. And I think just Palma, so yes. close. Palma, Lala, kind yeah. of the same thing. Yes, I forgot they made the change. Uh, but, yeah, very good effort from Palma. And Lala was there to back him up to make sure it wasn't a th triple there for Paulino. Yeah. I'll just claim I mispronounced his name. Yeah, just say it's Paula. And it's like, oh, yeah, fucking Lala. <laughs> but a clutch hit for Paulino. And it brings Murray to the plate, who's been a clutch hitter today, too. First pitch is a strike. Tying run now on second base with two outs here in the top of the eighth. Thurman got the first two outs on strikeouts. Murray waits. Thurman fires. Nice off-speed pitch. One ball, two strikes now. It's a great changeup. Just got Murray yeah. way too early on that swing. He was thinking fastball. Let's see what happens on the one-two with two outs. Tap foul. One-two again. High. Watch uh, Paulino out at second base. He's the base runner. He goes behind the base. He doesn't take a lead toward third. He's way behind second base. Now he looks to go. Swing and a miss. Doesn't matter as Thurman strikes out the side after giving up a double. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Tampa holds on to the 3-2 lead right here on TampaSpartans.tv.
Bottom of the eighth, Anthony Nunez will lead off for Tampa. Jake McKenna on the mound for Lynn. Tampa picking up two in the bottom of the seventh. 3-2 lead. It was just what the Spartans needed. Their second hit of the ball game by Drew Earhart. It tied the record and also gave them the lead. Nunez. Nunez batting lefty. McKenna's ready. Curveball breaks down and out of the zone. Nunez waits on the 1-0. Now it's 1-1. Jamarcus Lyons on deck. Dances away from that one. 2-1. And the pitch. Whoa. That one started way outside, couldn't come in, and it's 3-1. It just missed a little outside and high, even though it lands somewhat in the zone in the glove. We're it just trying to come back, yeah. Yeah, it just comes back a little too late for to get the call. 3-1. Missed way outside. That is the 10th walk of the game for Tampa. Double-digit walks. They have two hits, three runs, ten walks. They also have ten strikeouts, but it's honestly it's, incredible. It's, silly. <laughs> it's incredible to see that they only have two hits, yet they've had like thirteen base runners. Yeah. There he goes. Ground ball. They're not going to get the force. They're going to have to go to first. And so I guess we'd call it a hit and run. Yeah, I've worked to perfection there for yeah. Lions. Well, maybe not exact perfection. Lions would have preferred <laughs> to be safe. Yeah, or get a hit. Works as a semi-sacrifice, if you will. Yep. So, runner in scoring position. Gutcher at the plate. After he got on base last time with a walk, he actually stole second. And you know what? That was the dreaded leadoff walk. It was. And that's what it is. Although I think Tampa's had a few leadoff walks and hasn't been able to make them pay. But that time it Don't did. bring up details. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, we need to make it fit the uh, leadoff walk propaganda. <laughs> yeah. That it's always a 66% chance of a run scoring. Yes. Even though it isn't. Nunez in scoring position. Gutcher waits. Curve ball. It's relying on the curve. That one hits the zone. Long look in. Gutcher waits. Did he swing at that? Bounces in the dirt, and Nunez goes over to third. I think he offered, though, as a batter. And I think I they, quickly, they quickly checked, and he did go around. Yeah, oh, he did. The good news is it didn't foul off his bat. <laughs> yeah. It did miss probably a bit of a margin. So Nunez is just 90 feet from home. But the ball was only 58 feet and then bounced in the batter's box. Anyway, it's 0-2. Goes after that one and goes down swinging. Saladino now to the plate. One out, man on third. Nico Saladino to see if he can bring him in. 
This will be a big run. The top of the ninth coming up after this. Strike call. McKenna in the stretch. In the dirt. New baseball tossed in. Saladino waits. Nunez on third, the pitch. Fouled off. That might have made it out onto Cass. Nope, there we go. Came back. All the movers are out, I think, uh, today. So That might have taken somebody out yesterday. Yeah, potentially. <laughs> A lot of people moving out of dorms. One ball, two strikes. Swing and a miss. Nice pitch. Off speed. Ends the inning. We'll go to the ninth. It is a 3-2 Tampa Spartans lead. Tampa holds on to win. They're Here we go, top of the ninth. Tampa up three to two. Lynn will send up the five, six, seven hitters. The two, the uh, one, two, three hitters for Lynn have all five hits today in this game. Bottom six, Ofers. This will be La Montagna. He is Ofer two. Eli Thurman. See if he can shut the door. Big switch as always for him. First pitch, call strike. We've set the scenario, a win for Tampa, they win the SSC. A loss earlier in the day by Rollins was their fifth. Tampa sitting at four losses right now. That one is hit though, but drifting is Lala. Stays in the park, doesn't quite make the warning track. We have one out. That put a little jolt into people, though, for a second. Certainly, that would have stopped a few hearts here at the University of Tampa. And now I'll mention as well, we mentioned the wind. It's blowing back onto the field. Yes. But the wind is not here right now. I'm taking a look. The trees aren't moving. They're standing still. That was just a lucky, perfect, perfect flyout, yeah. I think. To use some MLB The Show terms, because <laughs> that was very well hit, but Okamura. just a little too high. Okamura fouls that one off. Good job by the third base coach. Field that one. That's a G11. Yeah. Fielding it flawlessly. Swing and a miss. Nice pitch by Thurman. Ahead 0 2. On deck is Dockerty. Little low, one and two.
Ball low. Tampa's won the first two games, trying for the three-game sweep. The pitch outside, so from 0-2 to 3-2. Mentioned Doherty on deck. He's also 0 for, uh, an 0 for today with 0 for 3. Don't give him any signs of life. 3-2 pitch coming up. Ground ball heading out to J.D. Urso. Fields it. Strong throw. One hop to Earhart. He makes the play. Scooping that one out. And there's two down. That was a play saver there. A high power throw there by Urso and a good grab by Earhart. Those are not easy plays to make at first base, but he's versatile. He can play pretty much everywhere on the field. Doherty at the plate now. The shift is on. First pitch, swing and a miss. It's crucial to get that first strike here. The batting average, the stats after an 0-1 count, they go dramatically down. And Doherty did not need any other disadvantages <laughs> as he's over 3 entering this at bat. <laughs> with no times reaching on base, unlike Rodriguez, Matanya, and Okamura had. Swing and a miss, down to their last strike. And they put the shift on. They had somewhat of a shift. Now they put three on the first base side of second base. <laughs> Nunez playing shortstop. The 0-2 pitch on the way. Swing and a miss, the Spartans are Sunshine State Conference champs for the 2023 baseball season. Tampa wins it 3-2, to two, comes back and rallies to beat Lynn with two runs in the seventh on a Drew Earhart double that one hopped off the wall. Even though they only had two hits today, they win it 3-2. to two. Tampa 26-4 and four on the regular on the uh, Sunshine State Conference season, 37-4 and four on the season. Rollins is in second place, 25-22-5. and five. They cannot catch Tampa. They have three games next weekend. This completes the Sunshine State Conference season for Tampa. Every other team in the conference, the other 10 teams, will play next weekend. But Rollins cannot catch the Spartans. That's an important win and certainly a hard one to get. It took everything out of the Spartans. They showed good plate discipline with 10 walks, but then conversely, 12 strikeouts. So a lot of strikeouts from the from the Lynn pitching staff. They made this one a hard win. Tampa at times felt like they didn't want it, but at the end of the day, they're able to get it. Drew Earhart with some clutch hitting. Thurmond shutting the door in the 8th and ninth. And with that, the Spartans are your Sunshine State Conference champions. They haven't got the regional first seed yet. Yeah. If they do struggle in their final series of the season and Rollins is able to continue their momentum, that could prompt the selection committee to make a change. But at this stage, it's very likely that we will be the one seed. But either way, even though this is the final home game of the regular season, we'll probably see you in two weeks' yes. time for some regional baseball. Definitely so. Spartans will conclude the regular season by going up to Newberry, South Carolina, Thursday, Friday, to finish out. And as we said, the other 10 teams in the Sunshine State Conference will go head-to-head -head next weekend. So we'll be back. We'll announce next weekend what the regional matchups are, but more than likely, as you said, Taylor, we'll be back here in two weeks for regional play. Spartans are Sunshine State Conference champs. Congratulations to Joe Urso and the gang. Job well done. They knew what they had to do this weekend, and they did it. For Taylor Stolworthy, this is Jack Ike saying thanks for joining us. We'll see you in a couple weeks on TampaSpartans.tv.